What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Woodsy Owl, coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns, bringing you my week three match for QDL. This week, we are playing and Quarantina Boy, who is coach of the California Slowbros. Uh, his team consists of absolute top level threats straight out the get go. Uh, I think the trade off for him having so many elite draft mons is that he has a much shorter roster. Um, I think he has two less mons than I do, and I even have less mons than some, so that is the trade-off. Uh, things like Celestilo, though, could pretty much just wall <laughs> almost entire teams if it really wants to, if they don't have a good, like, fire or electric type. And being able to stay healthy with, like, Leech Seed left over to protect and stuff, uh, Zapdos got a huge buff in the DLC, being that it now has access to Hurricane and Air Slash, as well as, like, a Niche Weather Ball. I think that is something that could really push Zapdos over the edge as being a gigantic offensive threat. Uh, it was already a very good defensive threat thanks to its typing, but uh, now it could really be an elite offensive mon too, as it was already a, a decent offensive mon, but now it's like top notch. Uh, Garchomp is a mon that could do it all as well. It gets rocks, it could be bulky, it could be very threatening offensively with like Sword Stance and stuff like that. Edge Quake is great coverage in general. Uh, Weavile is just a fast mon that again doesn't really necessarily have a lot of switch-ins because Dark Ice is tough to switch in, especially when you throw in like that low kick coverage. Volcanion is another thing that has tough switch-ins because it has so many different coverage moves. Water Fire is a really cool typing offensively and very unique. And then uh, passed out in his lower tiers, he has some great support options being Mill Tank, who could be a bulky milk drink, heal bell, uh, stealth rock kind of mon. Um, it can maybe be okay offensively if it's running like a, because it has good coverage moves in general. I think Body Slam Earthquake Ice Punch is really enough to be good in general. And then it could run like maybe Curse. Compe is something that could be a nice bulky defog aromatherapy kind of mon, or if it wants to, uh, realistically it's better said it's probably like Calm Mind or Draining Kiss, which uh, under the right circumstances could sweep teams pretty pretty freely. But uh, thankfully I don't think these are the right circumstances this week. Same thing goes with Blossom. Uh, Quiver Dance and Strength Sap is a very scary combo of moves. But unfortunately, they are on a Mon with some pretty unimpressive base stats, as well as offensive coverage. Uh, I don't really think Grass plus Fairy, non-stab Fairy as, as long at that, is enough to break through teams, especially with like 90 special attack or whatever it has. And uh, I think my Heat Drain is going to be something that could really shut down those two, which is why I expect them to bring these six Mons in, the, in his top team builder here. Uh, the plan... Then, to beat these mons, it begins here. We have a just generally bulky Heatran set that is uh, not necessarily specifically here to shut down anything other than those low tiers that I don't really see coming anyway. Uh, it can maybe serve as a switch into something like a Celesteela or a Zapdos, or uh, maybe even a Miltank, but I have to keep in mind that Celesteela and Miltank do get access to Earthquake, and Zapdos can really chip me down pretty easily just by Vault Switching and Thunderbolting and that kind of stuff. So, it's not a great check, but I really just need the Seatran to eat a few hits and be able to get Stealth Rocks up as well as maybe spread some status moves around like Toxic and Burns from Lava Plume. So this is just a mod that I expect to be on the field early game and uh, maybe set up some chip damage for some other mods later on. Tapu Bulu this week is a physically defensive set. Uh, it is my only switch in on my entire roster to Garchomp. Uh, that being said, yes it does very easily deal with this dual stab, but Garchomp has great coverage options and Iron Head and Poison Jab for it, which is why I am running the Kebia Berry to be able to take half damage from that Poison Jab. I will be able to eat a Poison Jab pretty easily, which might be unexpected and deal a lot of damage back with Play Rough, but that being said, Play Rough will not kill in return. It only does about 70% or so. So, uh... He could realistically just like poison jab me, I get the damage off, and then he just kills me the next turn anyway. Uh, so this is really just my desperate Garchomp answer because I don't really have a lot of great options here other than maybe revenge killing. Uh, so Bulu's job this week is to really just maybe eat some hits from that and get some chip on it. It could also be a uh, like a knockoff switch in if he decides to run Choice Banded Weavile, but 
I expect them to probably bring like a setup Weavile rather than that. Uh, and even so, like it's not something that I could just easily switch into a Choice Band Weavile because he could just blow me away with Ice Crash. Crash. Uh, Nature's Madness is there in case he wants to switch in Celestilo or something like that on this that would normally be eating up a play rough. Uh, Leech Seed and Synthesis are just generally annoying moves to keep my Bulu on the field. And with that, we will get into my big offensive threat this week, being Choice Specs Modest Greninja. Uh, even with Modest Nature, I'm able to outspeed everything on his team with the exception of Weavile, who I was never going to be outspeeding anyway. But with that 48 defense EVs, I'm able to guaranteed live a Choice Banded Low Kick from Weavile as well as resist both of his dual stabs, so I do still beat Weavile one-on-one -on -one under the right circumstances. Um, Dark Pulse is really my spammable move with the specs, because he doesn't really have any switch-ins other than Confe, who I do not expect to come anyway. Uh, Weavile is technically a resist, but it doesn't really want to be coming in on a Dark Pulse. Uh, I think if rocks are up, Dark Pulse probably two hit KOs it anyway. And uh, Hydro Pump is something that could blow both of those mons back anyway. Uh, Hydro Pump is also a nice option if I need the extra damage to break through, like especially defensive Stellasteela or Miltank. But I do have to be careful because he does have the water immunity and Volcanion. Ice Beam is a nice coverage move just to have a guaranteed revenge killer for Garchomp, who is something I need to be very wary of. And Water Shuriken is uh, something that could be priority to revenge kill that Weavile that I am scared of, or even something like a Scarf Garchomp or a Scarf Zapdos that gets out of hand. Moving on from that, we have a uh, Assault Best Haxorus, which is maybe an item you don't see on a Haxorus very often, but I don't have a great switch into Volcano on past Haxorus, which is why I'm running the Assault Best, because uh, it does resist both of its dual stab, and it's not really weak to any of its coverage moves either. Outrage is good for his entire team with the exception of Celesteela, who takes about 40% from low kick if he's only max HP, although I do kind of expect him to run a physically defensive Celesteela this week. So, uh, but low kick is still a good option for that, as well as maybe being able to do damage to Miltank without locking myself into a move. Uh, his other switch in would be Confe, which again, I don't really think is going to be there, but Iron Tail would Oko a max HP Confe anyway, and I would be able to eat even a draining fish from Confe because of the Assault Fest, so it's not something that really beats Haxers anyway. Uh, first Impression is a good priority option for being able to revenge kill that Weavile. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really think Garchomp or Zapdos are going to be taking much damage from a First Impression, so I'll probably have to rely on Greninja for revenge killing, stuff like that. Moving on, we have a bit of a funky Glade set here running all bulk this week. Uh, bulk up is something that I can uh, use to do damage with as well as be able to eat hits better because uh, with no attack investment I'm going to be struggling to break stuff through stuff like the Celesteela and the Zapdos and I think I will have some opportunities to freely set up a bulk up on something like a Mill Tank or like a Weavile that's scared of me or something like that. Uh, Drain Punch is going to keep me nice and healthy especially if they're boosted and I'm doing a lot of damage with them. Uh, I think generally speaking, Glade doesn't really get two shot by anything on his team other than maybe Weavile or an offensive Zapdos. Uh, Weavile is something that I could eat a knockoff from and just Oko in return with Drain Punch and get all that HP back anyway, though. And uh, offensive Zapdos would be maybe the only thing that could really deal with this all that well, but I do have the Ice Punch coverage for it as well as being able to hit Garchomp with that, who's another big threat to my team. And I don't think I'm going to be keeping Glade on the field against an offensive Zapdos. Anyway, uh, if he has defensive Zapdos, I do guarantee to live two air slashes from it, though. So that is something to keep in mind. Wish is there as a completely separate entity from the other stuff that I was just explaining. Um, during the game, I think I'm going to have to make a decision, depending on the situation, if I want to get bulk ups with this Glade or if I want to click Wish. Uh, I'm not... Planning on getting bulked up and getting all fat and then using Wish to keep myself healthy. I'm planning on e either bulking up and doing damage to stuff, or I'm going to come in as a pivot Wish and then pass the Wish to something else on my team. So, uh, Gallade is just something that's going to be very versatile this week. It's, I'm going to have a lot of options with what I want to do with this Gallade. Uh, it doesn't do anything specific, but that's why it, I'm running such a versatile one, so that it could do something in just about any situation that is good. And 
with that, we'll get into our last mod being Rotom, who is, again, our defogger this week. Uh, he does not have great switch-ins to discharge, with the exception of Garchomp, who hates getting Willowed. I think Willow Wisp and Garchomp is going to be a big deal if I could do it. Uh, I could pretty easily eat hits from Garchomp, too, and get the Willow off, and then be able to deal with it better. I think if it's Willowed, uh, even Tapu Gulu will be able to just handle it, even after poison jab damage and like getting my berry popped and everything, so that could be a big deal. Nasty Plot is there so that I could break through stuff that is fatter like his Celesteela and his Zapdos with Discharge because um, I think Rotom is going to be a good pivot into those mons as well as Miltank because I am either immune to or resist all of their good stab or coverage moves. Uh, so I could come in with Rotom and get a Nasty Plot up and be able to break through them while they won't really be able to break through me in return. So now that you see the team, we'll get into the game here. Um, looking, I mean, he does bring the six mods that I fully expected he would bring, and I'm thinking to myself, what can I lead? Um, I think Glade, even though I said that I was going to be making a decision halfway through the game with it, I kind of just decided to pop the cherry early, because it is just a good match up against literally everything on his team, other than, like, maybe if he leads Zapdos. So, I am just going to lead with it as he leads Garchomp, and with this Garchomp, I figure... I'm either going to A, scare him out with Ice Punch, or B, I'm going to live two Earthquakes after a bulk up anyway, so I do just decide to bulk up and take that as an opportunity to uh, start setting up. He goes Celesteela, which is something I also think I could pretty much set up on, and uh, eventually I'm going to be doing some big damage and Drain Punch on this thing, as he does this offer to... He gets the Toxic off on me, which I'm not that worried about, because I don't think I need this Glade to be on the field all that long. I'm just trying to get some early game chip at this point. Uh, he does reveal that he does have the Air Slash, which is uh, good for him, because he could actually do damage to me. Uh, I expect him to protect here, but I find out that he does probably isn't running to protect, because he just Leech Seeds, so that's why I bulked up that turn, because I thought he was just going to protect. But, he reveals that he didn't even have it to begin with, uh, so... I do just Drain Punch to try to give myself another turn <laughs> of being alive on the field, as he just does those Zap those. So, uh, unfortunately, Glade kind of got played around. Um, I think if I got, like, every one of those first five turns right, that maybe Glade could have done a big hole in his team. But he did play around it pretty nicely. I made some incorrect uh, predictions. So, as a result, I basically lose Glade, although I do still have it in the back as a stack for later on. Uh, I go into my Heatran here on the Zapdos, taking it as an opportunity to get up my Stealth Rocks, as he does just go straight into Garchomp, which is, uh, so he finally has his big threat in. I'm just gonna go to Bulu, like I kinda plan on doing the entire time, as he reveals to be Sub, which is a big deal. Because, uh, now that he has a Sub up, he could just click two Poison Jabs and kill me, and still be, you know, in a great position to do damage later on in the game, and, uh... Since I know he's sub, I can't really Willow Wisp it with my Rotom like I kind of planned on doing. So all of my plans for this thing other than Revenge Killing are kind of out the window. So I'm going to have to pretty much just sack him on every time this thing's on the field. And then Revenge Kill it later. Just because he is running that substitute. So good prep on him for having that. Uh, luckily for me, he does opt to click Stealth Rocks here rather than just popping my Barry with Poison Jab. He probably didn't expect the Barry, which is good for me. So I break a sub with Play Rough. And uh, here I do eat the Poison Jab as he does reveal to be carrying. But I do unfortunately miss the player off. So, <laughs> uh, at this point I'm like terrified. I'm like, oh, I just want like, this is a whole Mon on my team. But I'm now I'm pretty much down two Mons, but he does get greedy and sub up again. Which uh, doesn't really mean anything other than I'm guaranteed out of range of another Poison Jab now. Which he probably didn't know either, because I am his death. Uh, I would have lived on that roll anyway, so ultimately uh, that substitute really did was get more chip on him for me. Uh, but I have to be careful because since he has leftovers of Garchomp, he could still get healthy again later, so I really need to focus on keeping this thing low at this point. But uh, Bulu pretty much got its job done. I, I mean, like I said, I pretty much figured that Bulu wasn't going to do anything other than like maybe do like 70-80% of Garchomp, and like I was okay with that. So Bulu's job is done here. Uh, I am able to get Greninja in as my Revenge Killer as he goes into Volcanion, but because I do have the rocks up, Dark Pulse is going to be able to two-hit KO it. 
Uh, at this point, I do reveal that I am probably... You probably realize at this point that I am Specs Modest, which uh, he can maybe play around. But he does Revenge Kill with Weavile here. Uh, I don't really have a switch in, so I am just going to sack my Gallade that I saved as a sack. See, he reveals to be Power Up Punch, which is kind of uh, scary because... Uh, you know, if this thing's faster than my whole team, if he gets uh, attack boost and stuff, he could just rip through me. Uh, so I go Haxorus here to Revenge Kill, potentially with First Impression, but it is pretty obvious, and he just goes into the Cell Steal it to take no damage from that. Uh, I take this as an opportunity to pivot into my Rotom, because uh, I could pretty much wall anything Cell Steal it wants to do, is he just Leech Seeds me to get healthy. Um... I think this turn I Willow Wisp, yeah, I Willow Wisp because really nothing on his team wants to take a Willow, but I do miss, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal that I didn't get the burn on Zapdos of all Mons, but it is a little annoying. Normally I would be able to just sit there, but since he has the Leech Seed up on me, I don't want to let him just Seed off of me, so I switch in the Heatran as he defogs. Um, I'm going to get the rocks right back up because I do really need rocks to chip down the Weevil and the Zapdos and stuff and keep the Garchomp at bay, but he does just go hard Garchomp and force a uh, situ pressure situation on me. Um, I go into Rotom on, I think, what was the Earthquake? Yeah, so I do get that turn right and I am able to survive another day past the Garchomp. Uh, I do just click Will-O-Wisp again here. Uh, and I am going to land it this time on the Zapdos, which is kind of, you know, no big deal, whatever. I'd at least get to negate his leftover. Uh, this is my answer to, or an answer to Zapdos that I have anyway, so I'm just going to nasty plot up on this thing. As he does no damage in return with Discharge. And I'm going to do a big chunk back to him with my own Discharge. And, uh... He toxics me, which I don't really care that much about. I don't need Rotom long term. It just kind of buys me some switch ins and maybe does some annoying stuff to his team. Uh, he does go Guard Chomp as I discharge again. If I had the Shadow Ball, I probably would have clicked it there because it would have killed Zapdos anyway, and I would have got the kill on Guard Chomp, but unfortunately I don't. Uh, so ultimately it would have been better to keep the Shadow Ball over Will O Wisp like I kind of had originally. But I don't know that I necessarily regret it. It was just good prep on him to have Substitute on Garchomp. Otherwise, I think Will-O-Wisp would have been nice over Shadow Ball. Because, again, Shadow Ball is going to do like 30% of the Garchomp. So uh, it wasn't really that important to have. I think it, burning it would provide more value. But I pretty much have to sack him on at this point as he gets his rocks back up. And I just have to sack Haxorus to break his sub. So that I'm able to revenge kill it with Greninja afterwards. Um, so I do that as he kills my Haxorus again. I, Haxorus never does anything for me, man. I, it's a mod that I feel like I should be getting so many kills with, but it always dies. Uh, but I do get my kill with Greninja here in return, being able to two-hit KO his mill tank with Dark Pulse. But this is just going to put him in a situation where now he could revenge kill me with his Weavile. Ah, uh, so I'm just going to sack my Rotom, knowing that all of that Rotom is going to do this game is let his Garchomp get leftovers recovery. So I'm just going to let it go. And at this point, I kind of have to just <laughs> pray that I get enough Water Shuriken hits to kill this Weavile from this range. Uh, I want to say that the roll was I guaranteed kill him with four Water Shurikens, or I could get like three high roll Water Shurikens and kill him. So I have to pray for one of those two things to happen. Get the first one, get the second, get the third, no high rolls, but we do get the fourth, and we are able to luckily get through this Weavile. Uh, I don't know that Water or uh, Power of Punch would have killed me anyway, so I think I might have been okay, but him getting me down to probably Rock's damage would have been game, I'm assuming. Uh, like, I would have gotten that kill, but I, I think as far as the rest of the game goes, that would have been a big deal. Uh, as he goes to Steela, I just go into my Heat Train, because knowing that Water Shuriken is not going to do much, and he makes the good double and the Guard Chomp to be able to force a kill with Earthquake. As he is going to do, I'm just going to let him take my Heat Train, because I know that my, uh, my Greninja is the only way that I'm going to win this game. Uh, he's going to have to come back from behind here all by himself, but luckily he does outspeed everything, and he has no Dark Pulse switch in, so I could just spam. Uh, Guard Chomp is dead. 
Zapdos is basically dead too because it only has 20% and rocks are up. So I just have to beat the Silasteel with the Dark Pulse. Uh, I do not get a flinch, but it doesn't matter because the best thing he has to hit me with is Leech Seed, which is not going to give him enough recovery to be able to survive another Dark Pulse. Uh, at this point, there's nothing he could do. He just sacks up those the rocks here and brings Celesteela back in, who is going to die to another Dark Pulse. And with that, we got a little bit lucky. Uh, I don't want to say like that lucky, but we did get a little lucky uh, to be able to keep her undefeated streak alive. Uh, Greninja, I think, got every kill this week. Hit tongue game. Too goddamn strong this week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he killed everything but Zapdos. He just got sacked to it on rocks. So it's pretty much got six kills. Uh, I think it was the only thing on my team that even did anything, really. I'm pretty sure I just sacked all the other five mods. So uh, shout out Greninja this week. Um, win's a win. We'll take it. We're still undefeated at 3-0. And we will see you next week for our week four match.